The unfortunate mass shooting in Orlando has once again brought along calls for gun control. And while many people will try to convince you that Americans all across the nation are calling for stricter gun restrictions, uh, if you go talk to the gun shops or the big box stores who have been selling these things out the door since the incident has happened, it's not exactly that clear cut and cut and dry. Now I'm going to talk about some of the gun control measures that failed here recently. And before I get into this article from Fox News, I want to talk briefly about the situation that's going on in Connecticut and also New York, where they had a look at the gun control bills, basically the uh, the SAFE Act's going up there, and those remained unchanged. Now, what we're going to be talking about here is something different from that. And as we talk about the gun control measures that failed to clear the Senate, we see uh, four of them here. We'll start with the one from Senator Chuck Grassley, and this was to enhance funding for an existing gun background check system, which needed 60 votes to pass. The final vote was 53 to 47. Now, first of all, now this isn't going to be a debate whether or not we should or should not have gun background checks. I understand have shall not be infringed and all that. I'm just talking about as the, the system as it exists today. Uh, when I go to a gun store or I go to a gun show and I purchase a firearm, I always go through the NICS background check system where I give them my ID, I fill out the paperwork, they call the FBI or whoever they have to call, and then uh, they see that I have no criminal record and they give me my firearm. Now, that's my case. If you have criminal records or you're on a terror watch list or whatever else, you will be denied from that system. So I don't see any issue with the system as it exists today. People say that they need to have um, various uh, mental health screenings. And that's another whole issue that I think is not exactly up to snuff with where it needs to be before we can implement that across the board. Because we've shown you the studies of the DSM-5 where you have any kind of uh, variable in your mood or personality. They want to call that a mental health disorder. That's why I'm very skeptical of things like that. We'll move on now to the second measure here by Senator Chris Murphy. And this would expand gun background checks to close the supposed gun show loophole that failed 44 to 56. Now, once again, as I was saying, when I go to the gun show, every time I bought a gun from the gun show, I think I bought two guns from a gun show. Both times I had to go through the background check system where I gave the guy my ID. I filled out the form. He called the FBI, whoever he had to call. And they realized that, you know, yes, this guy is safe to sell a firearm too. Now I know many people out there will try to convince you. If you go to a gun show, there is no background check. Uh, the, the guys are just, you know, swapping guns left and right. And is it, technically legal for a independent, you know, being myself, not an FFL dealer to sell a gun without a background check to somebody else. Yes, that is legal. But this notion that you can go to a gun show and not have to have any background check is completely false. And this is evidence uh, courtesy of Steven Crowder. What is this? This is a Nick's background check. Oh, I thought at gun shows you didn't have to do a background check. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I know technically you can't sell it, but are any of these fully automatic? Negative. Real quick, sorry, I'm in a hurry. Can I get a gun here without a background check? <laughs> and that's a more realistic view, even though it's comedic, of what happens when you go to an actual gun show. Let's go on to uh, Senator John Cornyn. He was proposing a delay of sale to a suspected terrorist for 72 hours. Once again, this sounds very reasonable on its face. And I'd like to give uh, Senator John Cornyn credit and say that maybe he doesn't understand the system as it exists today. And we've done numerous reports documenting uh, people who are on the terrorist watch list, the no-fly list, if you will. And we've shown you the reports of Boy Scouts and little girls and you know, kids with candy stuck in their teeth getting kicked off of planes because they have the same name with the same birthday or whatever else as a suspected or you know listed terrorist. And while we would like to believe that we are in a better world where a government official or official could identify that, no, this little Boy Scout is not an actual terrorist. He's just a little boy. That kid got kicked off the plane. So when you have these measures, including the next one we're going to talk about with Mrs. Feinstein saying that uh, basically if you're on a terror watch list for anything, you won't be able to buy a, a firearm. Just basically take anybody on the terror watch list and expand it out to other areas of life. The issue with that, as well as the issue with uh, what Cornyn is proposing, is you're assuming that these systems work as they are today. And as I just gave the example about the little kids, they do not work perfectly. So let's take the example of that little boy, New York Times article, Boy Scout, 
or the little girl, you know, four or five years old, whatever she was, not being able to board that plane. If you expand this uh, no fly list to a no buy list or no, you know, whatever list, that means when those kids turn 16, they're not going to be able to get a job. They're damn sure not going to be able to join the military when they become military age and on the terror watch list. Oh, definitely not. That's my issue with these watch lists. Now, in a perfect world, if they could get out these kinks and find out who's really on the watch list, I would be more adept to something like a 70, 72 hour uh, delayed for, you know, a suspected terrorist, uh, you know, uh, perpetrator. But until they can fix that, I'm not a fan of this at all. There are many things that need to be fixed at the ground level to get these things worked out before they can go nationwide. And that's just some of the things that happened here in the world recently. Thank you so much. And back to you, Leanne.